Welcome to another video of U.S. Immigration TV. You know, throughout my legal career, spanning over 40 years, I've come across people who rely on myths, misconceptions, rumors, and hearsay when it comes to immigration law. Now, they may hear things from well-meaning friends or relatives or be at a party or something, and they're told things and they come to believe it. But some of the advice could be wrong, and if they follow that wrong advice, it could be devastating to their case and future in the U.S. In this video, I will talk about one major misconception or misunderstanding, especially among the Filipino community. Simply put, separated is not single. And if somebody marries while they're only separated, the second marriage could be void. Now, the typical scenario is that somebody marries in their home country, let's say the Philippines, and then that spouse abandons them or disappears. Years later, the person gets a visitor visa, comes to the U.S., meets and falls in love with, let's say, a U.S. citizen, and they want to get married. Then they hear that, you know what, if you're separated from your first spouse or they've disappeared or you have not seen them in seven years, you're free to marry. That is wrong. Immigration law is that if a person is validly married, according to the laws of where the marriage took place, they are considered married. They cannot remarry unless and until the first marriage is terminated legally. And if they do get married without terminating the first marriage, the second marriage is void as bigamous. And if they're petitioned or they get a green card, it's maybe through fraud or they were never considered to be lawfully admitted. Instead, the first marriage must be legally terminated. Now, there are three main ways to legally terminate a first marriage. One, of course, is the first spouse dies. In that case, they are free to remarry. But it has to be a situation where the first spouse dies before the second marriage. I've come across situations where somebody marries a second time while the first spouse is still alive. And years later, the first spouse dies. The second marriage may not be considered valid because at the time of the marriage, the first spouse was still alive. Okay, so bottom line, death can terminate the first marriage. Another one is divorce. Divorce is recognized in the U.S. And if a person obtains a valid divorce in the U.S., the first marriage would be considered legally terminated and they would be free to remarry. Uh, if they legally divorce in the U.S., they do not need an annulment in their home country, which leads me to the third way to terminate a marriage, which is annulment. Um, However, if a person is in the U.S. and they are out of status, it would be difficult to go back to their home country to attend court hearings for the annulment because if they leave, they could be subject to the three or the 10 year bar. But the bottom line is, separated is not single. If you want to marry a second person, you must legally terminate your first marriage. And this is only one of the many, many myths and misconceptions that people follow or rely on, and it could be devastating. And in the future, I will be posting more videos dealing with common myths and misconceptions uh, to educate you, to warn you, and to help you with your immigration future in America. Because I remember I had one situation, a case, a woman and her U.S. citizen husband uh, came to my office on a Friday for consultation. They had their marital interview the next Tuesday. Well, it turned out she was still married to the first husband. What we did is we put a stop to the interview. I had her divorce, remarry the American, and then file a new petition based on the marriage that took place after her divorce, and she got a clean green card. Can you imagine what might have happened to her had she gone to the interview and either they discovered the first marriage was still active 
or maybe later on when she applied for U.S. citizenship, uh, the bigamy of her second marriage came up. That's why I think it is so important when you have something as important as your immigration future, future for yourself, for your family, especially your children, you should consult with an attorney. Don't rely on gossip, hearsay, myths, misconceptions of other people. Uh, you know, I often say when you rely on family and friends, what law school did they go to? The best is to get advice from an immigration attorney. And I will continue to post videos that I believe could be helpful, useful, and productive for you in connection with you applying for your immigration benefits. So therefore, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. I'm Michael Gerfinkel, and this is U.S. Immigration TV.